I want to return to some of the topics about your legal work in private practice, specifically for the Ministry of Commerce, the People's Republic of China, uh, and for Huawei. You were a full equity partner at Sidley, is that correct? Um, I, I, I was, I did have some equity. I wasn't, I don't think, I wouldn't characterize myself, myself as a full partner, but I was okay. a partner. Does uh, Sidley have a policy to allow lawyers to decline work for clients uh, if they find it morally objectionable? Um, Senator, I, I took the work, uh, the, the work I did for the Ministry of Commerce and, that I just, and Huawei that I described for Senator Rubio uh, was work that was consistent with uh, my practice of helping companies understand U.S. law, comply with U.S. law, and or prepare for, for an argument, in that case, prepare for an argument for the Supreme Court. So that's, I took it in that vein. Um, that's why that's that's but, why I took that work. So I, I understand you took it in that, but I'm asking if Sidley has a policy that allows lawyers to decline work if they have objections to a client. I remember years ago, firms uh, would allow lawyers to decline work for tobacco companies, for instance, if they found that work morally objectionable. Uh, Senator, I, I I don't know if there's an official policy to that end. I I don't know if I would have been able to decline the work if I would have tried. Okay, thank you. Um, just this morning, the New York Times reported on Apple's years-long collaboration with the Chinese Communist Party to provide every piece of data from Apple's devices in China to communist police forces, uh, despite years, of course, of evidence of oppression and genocide. Uh, this is just one more example of Apple's deep, deep entanglement with the Chinese Communist Party. Um, in you list in your disclosures, Apple is one of your major clients. Uh, could you please characterize the nature of the work you did for Apple? Uh, Senator, I, I did a, a range of work for Apple on a lot of topics. Um, I, I don't, I, I don't re recall doing anything vis-a-vis -vis Apple with respect to its relationship with China, but I worked with them on a number of matters related to privacy and other topics. But you don't, you don't recall doing any work for, for Apple that was related to its relationship with China? Uh, not that I recall, though I, I did a, a fair amount of work with them over the years. So I Thank you. Thank you. I, I'll just say, obviously, that the committee has concerns um, about what's come to be known as the China lobby, um, and it's pervasive in this country, far more pervasive than these clients you've had. And I don't just mean, you know, registered agents for Chinese company. Uh, it's everywhere. Multinational corporations or small manufacturers in all our states have about state outsourced production to China. The, CEOs of major investment banks met with China's trade negotiator right before he met with President Trump's trade negotiator. Hollywood won't have movies with Chinese bad guys because they want access to the Chinese market. University presidents will lobby us to maintain the flow of Chinese students who pay full freight at our universities. University professors still want to get money from Chinese-owned entities. So this is a very, very serious concern of the committee, and I think this is why you have members asking you a question about the nature of this work. Um, Mr. Holmgren, I, I want to turn to you and a, a question that we discussed in our conversation a couple weeks ago, Nord Stream 2, which is, I'd say right now, Vladimir Putin's number one foreign policy priority to complete. Um, it's in the final stages of uh, its construction. It'll be completed later this year if nothing happens. Um, it will make Western Europe even more dependent on Russian gas while also depriving Eastern European NATO allies of the uh, um, concessions they get for the pipelines that come from Russia to Western Europe. Um, last year's defense bill greatly expanded the scope of companies subject to sanctions for supporting uh, this pipeline. I understand the State Department has contacted some of these companies to make them aware of their potential sanctions exposure. If you're confirmed, can you commit to immediately providing the Senate with the unclassified list of companies involved in that project? Uh, that the IC produced in response to last year's National Defense Authorization Act. Thank you, Senator Cotton, and I appreciate our conversation on this issue. Um, just let me say at the outset, I am under no illusion that this pipeline is an economic development project, as Putin claims. I uh, believe that it is the latest example of Putin's desire to weaken Western alliances and ultimately, as you indicated, to exert influence down the road on our European partners and allies. So I appreciate the seriousness of this issue. If confirmed, I would uh, I commit to you that INR will uh, support the department and the intelligence community 
in identifying and assessing and evaluating entities that may be involved in violating U.S. imposed and sanctions. You have my commitment in that regard. Thank you. I mean, ultimately, this is not going to be your call. It's going to be the Secretary's call and really President Biden's call. Um, I, I've seen troubling reports today that the administration may be preparing to waive sanctions on certain German entities. So we'd be in the very strange position where we're sanctioning the company that's trying to build the pipeline, but we're not going to sanction the company that's in charge of it or the company that's going to be using it, all because we want to maintain friendly relationships with Germany, at, which is currently throwing our Eastern European allies under the bus over this pipeline. So it's a matter of serious concern to the committee. I would remind this, and I agreed with your comments about Apple and some of the others, the one industry that refused to meet with this committee uh, when we were doing our China classified roadshows was private equity, which was, um, again, I think. It There's basically out. no industry and no place, no organization in America that's not potentially compromised by the China lobby. That's why it's so important that we do the work to expose the China lobby. Senator Feinstein. 